Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do something a little different. A friend of mine asked me if it was possible to do a 3D printed business card. Today we're going to do just that. It will be a simple design since I don't want to overcomplicate things, but we'll make it look nice nonetheless. Let's open up Fusion 360 and get started. I've already saved my project at the start, so let's begin by creating our sketch on the XY or top plane. Next, we're going to create a rectangle that's going to be our business card. We'll make it 85 by 55 millimeters. Once we have our rectangle, let's round off the corners to give it a nicer look. We'll do this with the fillet command, and we're going to use four millimeters as our rounded corner. Choose all four corners and press enter. Let's add some design elements. We can add a thick curb that can hold some of the icons that will mark our business card information. Let's do this by adding a couple of three point arcs. We'll eyeball these to form our path. The way three point arcs work is that you place the first point down, then the last point, and stretch the curve to add that final center point. We'll do two of these to get our path where our icons will live. Now that we have the top side done, we should add some design elements to the back as well. We can do something cool in the back instead of just having a blank space. Let's flip the model over and add some curved elements here as well. We'll do a similar path here as well, except we'll do it at the top edge of the card, which will give us separated elements that we can color differently when we go to print this. It's also a nice visual element that we can use to call attention to something in the middle. Now that we have our curves, we can add some sort of visual anchor towards the bottom. We'll keep it simple here and just add a couple of rectangles, one spanning about 80% of the card and another one slightly larger just in the center. Please note that I'm not being very precise in my alignments or measurements. I'm speed running through this to show how simple it can be. If you wanted to do this for a client or for a job, you'd want to set some constraints to have everything lined up and be precise. We'll eyeball the position of this center rectangle too. In a future video, we'll go over how to set constraints and alignments, but for now, let's do it quick and dirty. Now that we have our back mostly done, with the exception of an additional element we're going to add later, we can begin extruding. We'll start by extruding the back using a negative extrusion, and we'll do it on the pieces that make up a single color. This way, everything will be together when we go to color them in later. After selecting the pieces, Hit E for extrude, and we'll use negative 1.5 millimeters as our distance. Don't forget to keep the operation as new body. Let's put our sketch back to visible and choose the curve and rectangle elements that will have the same colors. It helps to zoom in and choose the pieces that way, as some of them will have been cut by other sketch operations. Extrude those, and then do the same for the other elements here in the backside of the card. Now that we have the back of the card done, let's flip the view over and begin working on the front. What we want to do here is kind of the same thing as we did on the back. Start selecting some of the pieces, making sure that we get all of them, especially the ones that have been intersected by other pieces of the design. Now that we have our first piece done on the front, let's go ahead and do the center curve next. And finally, we're on our last piece here. So let's choose all those elements, extrude them, and then we can get to our next phase. Let's do a quick check around the model to make sure that all the elements have extruded properly. It's looking pretty good, so I think we can go on. Now that we know our canvas is good, we can start bringing in some of our vector elements. Let's start with the logo. 
For this, we're going to stick with a simple title, but since it's an SVG, it could have been anything. Click on Insert, SVG, then choose your file. Next, choose the top plane to place the SVG on our canvas. You'll notice it came in flipped and rather large. This is one of the things that happen when exporting from different applications. Let's rotate it around and scale it down while we place it in its final position. Now that we have our logo title placed, we can hit OK and start looking at bringing in the rest of our icons. We have four that we're going to place, one for the name, one for email address, one for website, and finally, one for phone. We'll place these along our curved path. The text for these will be on the right-hand side. We'll follow the same process we did for our logo title with one exception. We'll create a new sketch to have all the icons and text on one group. So, insert SVG, choose our top plane, then begin rotating, scaling, and placing the icons where we want them along our curved path. I'll speed through this since it's just repeating more of the same. One thing to keep in mind is how we size our elements. 3D prints often can get very detailed, particularly with the nozzles or heads that printers ship with, especially in the world of FDM printing. So we need to size everything a little bit bigger than what we'd normally use, so that the details don't get too lost. We'll also change some properties inside of Bamboo Studio to try to get more detail out of that print as well. Now that we have our icons done, we can create a new sketch to hold our text. After creating the sketch, choose Create, then Text. You'll see the text dialog pop up. We have to experiment a bit with the font height to get proper placement for our text. That is going to be very dependent on the style of font we choose. And as mentioned before, due to the level of detail that 3D printers can output, we have to be mindful of the font type that we choose. Some are clearer than others. When making this video, the first version I did had smaller text and icons, which looked good on screen. However, after printing, the text blended together and became very muddled. So I've made the icons bigger and will make the text a bit bigger as well. The design of this card also constrains the size of the text we can have. Other designs may allow for more room in which to have text. Some may lend itself better to 3D printed business cards. Now that we have our text done, we can begin extruding all these elements. We'll hide the bodies and sketches so that we don't accidentally pick the wrong thing. We'll start with the logo text. So let's choose all the letters and hit E for extrude. We'll extrude it upwards 0.5 millimeters. And don't forget to make sure that new body is selected. Just to check our work, let's unhide the bodies and take a look to make sure our extrusion is happening correctly. We'll grab our viewport cube and rotate the view to make sure we did everything right. Everything looks good, so we can begin the process of extruding our text. We'll hide the bodies again and begin selecting the solid pieces of our icons. We want them to just have the outlines extruded. This will make them look nicer than just solid bodies and they should be big enough that they print with enough detail. Once again, we extrude to 0.5 millimeters and check that our work is reflected in the bodies list and in our view. Finally, we can select all of our text and extrude it the same way as the rest. Now, we can do a final check on this top side of the card. Everything checks out, but I want to add one more thing to the back of the card. Let's flip the card over and add a new sketch. I've gone ahead and generated a QR code and converted it to SVG. Let's import it and place it here in the back. It'll be a nice touch for whoever gets the card to be able to just scan it with their camera and go to the company's website or social media account. We'll do things the same way as before, importing, adjusting the rotation and scale, and finally extruding it. We'll be extruding this inwards so that the design stays flat. 
This will print with the backside down on the print plate, so it needs to be flat. Now, this part is a little tedious due to the number of elements in the QR code that need to be extruded. What we need to do is highlight each and every one of the blocks that will need to be colored and extrude them. I have the QR code image on the side so I can refer to it to know which blocks need to be picked. It can be a little hard to tell while you're selecting, but it needs to be precise. Otherwise, the camera won't be able to recognize a valid code. I'll speed through the selection process here and get to the end. Now that we have everything selected, we can extrude it inwards. We'll go one millimeter in. That should be enough not to have any colors bleed through. After checking our work, we're finally done with the modeling part and we can get to the fun part, the printing. We're going to export our file and bring it into Bamboo Studio where we'll assign filament colors and set up our print settings. Now that we're in Bamboo Studio, we'll bring in our file and begin assigning colors. If you notice here, when we expand the objects list, there's a warning sign about non-manifold edges. Sometimes exports from 3D modeling programs can result in these warnings. I'm going to right click on the object group and click repair. It's a bit slower than going through the list and clicking repair on the ones that are affected, so I'm just going to cut to the end. The default color for everything is our first color, which happens to be black. We'll begin by assigning the white color to the back, which will let us see how the QR code will print. It's looking great, so we can go ahead and continue assigning colors. While I may be using purple here, I'll be printing it in a pink, since that's what I currently have loaded in my AMS unit. As always, choose the colors that you have on hand and what you want the card to look like. Once we have everything set up, let's go ahead and print this bad boy. And here we have it. It's looking great. Let's check out the QR code in the back and see if we got enough detail on it. We'll check to see if it works in a little bit, but it's looking really nice from a visual perspective. Now let's check the fidelity of the front text. That was my concern from the test print I made previously. That's looking nice and sharp. I'm really happy with this. The colors came out pretty nice too, and the logo text is looking great. Now let's check out the QR code and see if it works. I'm going to screen grab from my phone and see if it bounces me to the website. Now, will you look at that? That's fantastic. I'll end the video right here with the YouTube channel up as a hint for you to like and subscribe. See you next time.